problems here. So we've had many areas that could have some weakened trees from all the rain. So an inch of rain could also maybe bring down a couple of trees or two. Not quite uh, out of the um, uh, way or uh, uh, nothing too unusual there. So here we are by 8 o'clock or so. This is about the time I'm thinking is already going to be making landfall over in the Gulf side. So Jacksonville, notice how we... Uh, could see a couple bands of rain. This is one of the reasons why we're calling for just about an um, inch of rain or so, uh, Ray. So for the most part, the heavier rain is actually happening right now in Central Florida. Yeah, and then we'll continue to move northeast. But here's what we know right now about Tropical Storm Ada. 7.6 million are under tropical alerts. More than 15,000 customers are in the dark in Florida. Tampa International Airport expected to resume all operations by noon today. Maybe earlier if the airfield and the terminal base are deemed fit and we will continue to track it as impacts will be felt here over the next few hours and the landfall coming up here shortly and we'll have crews uh, in the area to track the path of Ada as it moves through Florida. Stay here at the Weather Channel. We've got Mike Seidel and uh, Reynolds Wolf, Jim Cantori coming with us here in the next couple of hours to report live from Tampa to give us the latest conditions on the water rise, the falling rainfall and the tropical storm force wind. Stay with us here with the Weather Channel. This record-breaking hurricane season isn't over. The threat from Ada is still complex and dangerous to the southeast. Big, big rainfall stretching from Miami all the way over to the west coast of Florida. No one can cover this historic hurricane season better than the Weather Channel. Get the information you need to stay safe all week long, right here on the Weather Channel. And this is what a tropical storm looks like. This is a new video that's just come in in Bradenton, Florida earlier. Ada lashing Florida for the second time, first time in the Keys, and yeah, water rise. And in some cases, we may end up with a storm surge in Tampa Bay in the top five right now. I think um, top four, maybe even top three. We'll see what happens here as the data is assessed. So a tropical storm and a strong tropical storm certainly have an impact here, as you can see some of that water rise. Well, welcome back to our continuing live coverage here of Ada. Uh, tracking it now, it's, it's probably going to be making landfall north of Tampa here in the next couple of hours. The center is located about 65 miles to the north northwest of St. Petersburg, Florida. And that center here has winds at 60 miles per hour, 994 millibars moving north at 10 miles an hour. So still a trajectory due north, which may take it a little bit further north up the coast where we see it start to bend there, right? The big bend of Florida. Near Jacksonville, the center is probably going to come on shore and move over your areas. We head through this morning as a weak tropical storm or a weaker tropical storm. So you could expect tropical storm conditions. That's why in Jacksonville and Ocala, you do have tropical storm warnings in place. So it's probably going to be within the next uh, four or six hours, maybe a little bit more in Jacksonville as we'll watch. Ada continue to move north and northeasterly, and that northeasterly movement will continue. Storm surge warnings do stay in effect for Tampa Bay, especially down near Port Charlotte, too. Still getting that onshore wind, which is pushing the Gulf of Mexico water into Tampa Bay. Flash flood watches for water coming out of the sky, and that's going to lead to additional flash flooding in some spots. Now, the rain is more widely scattered now, especially down in South Florida here, Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties. Uh, you do have flood watches in place, and those flood watches in place here as we head on through the early morning hours. So uh, we do have still some more rain in the forecast. We're not saying here in South Florida it's not going to rain, uh, but it won't rain a lot. The problem here, Todd, is that we've had 18, 20 plus inches rainfall from Ada in South Florida, and any additional rain could cause problems pretty quickly.
And unfortunately, uh, even though the rain may be tapering off, we also still have to deal with current storm surge. This is what it looks like, it looked like in uh, Sarasota as the storm surge uh, is uh, causing water to rise above normally dry ground. We can thank the 50 mile an hour winds that brought about the storm surge. Sarasota Police Department reporting that they have restricted traffic on and off the island to residents and emergency traffic only. And that storm surge warning continues to remain in effect as long as the storm surge continues to come off and the water continues uh, to push in from the Gulf. We still have the water that could be rising above uh, normally dry ground. Now, this is not just a Florida focus here. What's happening is we also have this very slow moving cold front that's heading its way through the Appalachians and a big area of high pressure uh, out over the Atlantic. In addition to the flow from um, Trop Storm Ada that's bringing that uh, counterclockwise flow. So what's happening is we have a whole bunch of tropical moisture, a lot of this tropical moisture streaming in and uh, filtering in around the Appalachians and then working its way on uh, the leeward side. And this is one of the reasons why we have widespread flood alerts and flood warnings for a good chunk of places like Virginia stretching from a uh, uh, Roanoke in uh, Lynchburg all the way up and, and around the D.C. suburbs and also over here in parts of Georgia and into uh, far southeastern parts or uh, southwestern parts of North Carolina. We actually have some uh, flood warnings out. In fact, flash flood warning does continue for uh, DeKalb, uh, Fulton, Gwinnett County in uh, Georgia until uh, 430 towns in White County in a uh, far uh, northeast Georgia mountains. And we have a flash flood uh, warning in effect until uh, 7 45 this morning as well. So again, this is one of those things where you may not be thinking about uh, rainfall in these areas as far as um, tropical storms. But uh, again, we have a big issue here as far as the uh, widespread flashwood watches and flood watches that are out for good part of the Appalachians into the Carolinas and Virginia. So we have some very dangerous uh, conditions still during the morning hours. And let me show you how things are shaping up. Well, not only are we going to be dealing with the bounce of heavy rainfall, but notice how we had later on this morning. It could intensify a bit and then into a good part of South Carolina from uh, and into North Carolina from Charlotte over toward Raleigh. We could see not only heavy rainfall, but maybe maybe increasing the, the slight chance for severe storms, but I'm a little bit more concerned about the flood risk from D.C. down through uh, Norfolk, uh, Raleigh into Wilmington. As we had later on this morning, Ray, uh, the uh, worst conditions will continue to push farther off to the east, but I would not be surprised. We have a lot of video coming out of these areas of Virginia down through the Carolinas where we're looking at some uh, big flooding issues. So this morning could be rather dangerous farther north and east from where it is. Yeah, Todd, and multiple flood warnings already lining up in through uh, parts of Virginia and the Carolinas, especially eastern North Carolina. That's where we're seeing heavy rainfall around Charlotte, Mecklenburg County, uh, thunderstorms and rain picking up an in intensity coverage. Look at this map. Just take a look at that through the next few hours into the eight o'clock hour here. Very heavy rainfall, so that's going to have impacts to travel. It's going to slow you on the roadways, and that's going to mean flooding. By midday, though, it moves on out, and I think by the afternoon, we're in better shape. So it's a quick mover, but it's very heavy rainfall. Flash flood watches in place. Two to three inches of rain coming over a short period of time. Some heavier totals off toward the east, but as we had said, some very heavy rain with a cold front coming in, hooking up with some of this tropical moisture that's coming in from the south. Uh, best chance for flooding in the darker green along the coastal areas and just inland of North and South Carolina but still the chance for some flooding in some of these kind of lighter green areas. Uh, those lighter green areas is where some heavier rain may fall. Watch now as we get into Raleigh and points east, east of I-95, just filling in again with heavier rainfall and thunderstorms, heavy rain causing flash flooding through midday. If anything, as we watch the center of Ada get closer and further north, pulling in more moisture, that rain becomes a little bit heavier in the eastern part of North Carolina. So very heavy rainfall expected here. Some of these totals exceeding six inches in some spots. At the Home Depot. We keep getting a new video, and this is why we keep talking about you should not be driving through flood waters. Check out this truck submerged in high water, and that's in a Safety Harbor, Florida, and that's in Pinellas, uh, Pinellas County. More than four inches have fallen so far. In addition, we're also dealing with some storm surge, so I would not be surprised we have more and more video uh, coming in with uh, images like this. So certainly got to be careful over the next several hours through this morning. So thank you for staying with us for a special round the clock coverage of Trops from Ada. I'm meteorologist Todd Bork. And I'm meteorologist Ray Stajic, and here we go again with a second landfall likely here from a tropical storm Ada here shortly as tropical storm conditions do continue to hit places like Tampa and Fort Myers Beach. Flash flood watch in effect until Friday in Fort Myers Beach. Tampa, you're dealing with several watches and warnings, including a storm surge warning, tropical storm warning, and a flash flood watch. However, worst 
of water coming out of the sky, probably past the strongest of the winds, most likely past us, uh, but still could see additional water rise or storm surge as uh, the center is located about 65 miles north northwest of Tampa St. Pete. So the center in this direction, the circulation in this direction coming out of the south and the southwest, that's continuing to push water up into Tampa Bay. A 60 mile per hour tropical storm currently tropical storm warning stay in place from uh, Port Charlotte to Sarasota and Tampa and as far north now as Jacksonville and right there into uh, southeast Georgia. Tropical storm conditions possible within the next few hours as the center comes in to land right around Cedar Key over the next few hours and then weakens a bit, but still a tropical storm even as it emerges back out over the Atlantic here, a 40 mile per hour storm by this evening. So still some stronger winds and tropical storm conditions. Thus, that tropical storm warning is as far north and northeast as a part of southeast Georgia. Heavy rain too on the east side and that heavy rain producing flash flooding uh, now getting out to the coastal waters here east of Orlando. So some of that heavy rain coming on in has left flash flood warnings in place. Some heavier rain coming in near uh, Lakeland here, Hillsboro, uh, Pasco and Pinellas counties, uh, Clearwater, St. Pete and Tampa. This is until 415, so uh, more water coming down in pockets and areas of heavy rain. These bands continue to circulate in, so I'll uh, be ready and continued flooding occurring and more possible, especially where some of this rain comes in and estimated rainfall totals. This is uh, what the radars estimate anywhere from five to eight inches in some spots, so very heavy rain around Tampa down near Sarasota, especially we've seen flooding. There still is flooding and there may be more flooding in some of these areas. A uh, video in Tampa or social media showing significant flooding on Bayshore Boulevard with a vehicle submerged. Uh, water appears to be knee deep to waist deep in some spots. So this is what can happen, Todd, even from a tropical storm. So that's why we emphasize you got to pay attention to every storm. Each one is unique and has its own kind of characteristics. That's right. And this is uh, this characteristic with this particular storm is about the flooding. Certainly heavy rain. Head of Ada is causing flooding right now, and you can see some of the uh, images we have here. This is from Sarasota. Nearly four inches of rain fell in Sarasota on Wednesday. And Ada is continuing to work its way closer to landfall farther off to the north, but the rain and the high water due to storm surge will continue for coastal cities along the Gulf side of uh, Florida right now. Look at the widespread uh, flood alerts that are out in Florida here, anywhere from Cedar Key all the way down to the south of uh, Fort Myers, and then also along Alligator Alley along I-75 through uh, parts of South Florida. And we also still have the flood watch on the eastern half here from uh, parts of West Palm Beach, Lauderdale down toward Homestead. One of the reasons why we're talking about the amount of heavy rain that we've seen uh, so far this year. And I'll get to some of those numbers in a moment as far as the rainfall totals we've seen in the year and how drastic it is in the peninsula. Let me show you how the, uh, the high-res radar is trying to look at a potential landfall later on this morning, somewhere on either side of a sunrise. We're talking six, seven, eight o'clock or so, but notice how the heavier bands of rain will still be out there in areas that certainly do not need any more rain. Miami already looking at a surplus of 24.2 inches of rain just for the year. So it does not need any more rain and it does look like we're going to get another little band that could be coming through later on this morning. By the time we get this afternoon, the rain should be tapering off for Florida. It becomes offshore. It'll be more of an event that'll be bringing storm surge issues uh, into the southeastern states, Atlantic side from the Georgia coast up to, through the Carolinas. So rainfall still come maybe another two to three inches. It's not going to be a big heavy rainmaker as we head uh, through the later in the morning hours. It's going to be more during the pre dawn hours where the worst conditions will happen here. Now talk about the soil mo moisture and talk about how dry it's been. It's really been a north south issue here in Florida. Here in Miami uh, or in South Florida, I've already talked about uh, Miami getting a, a surplus of 24.2 inches. Places like Lauderdale Fort Lauderdale were 28.5 inches above normal as far as the rainfall for the year, but places farther off north and also to the west, places like Sarasota, were only about a three inch uh, rainfall surplus for the year. Obviously, a little bit more for today. So, the rainfall totals here in Florida, places like Hollywood, look at that. Almost 14 and a half inches of rain has fallen uh, in Florida, at least with this particular storm. So make sure you stick with us all morning long for continuing coverage of Trop Storm Ada. We have live team coverage spread out, bringing the very latest on this historic hurricane season as it continues. A storm surge triggering flooding in Pinellas County, Florida. Seems like this playing out along the western coast of Florida. Reports of waste deep water in Pinellas County. The storm has dropped over four inches of rain Thursday. But it's the storm surge up to five feet in some spots that's really causing the flooding. And that storm surge is how deep the water is above dry ground. And 
Tampa is one of those spots, Tampa Bay, that is a very vulnerable to surge flooding. Uh, with a tropical storm with 60 mile per hour winds, you get a four to five foot water rise. Um, that's what we've seen. Now, some of these values have started to come down a bit. In old Tampa, old Port Tampa here, currently uh, three foot storm surge, two and a half at St. Pete. And as you can see, the winds are still coming in, though, from the southwest. So that's pushing that water in from the Gulf and into Tampa Bay. So certainly something that uh, may continue here as we head on through the next few hours. Now, St. Pete, your storm surge flooding records. Say that quickly a couple of times. Uh, Elena, in 1985, we had a four foot storm surge. But now with Ada, we're right here at about 3.42. But as we saw, some of those values are higher. And certainly when the storms assessed, we may see possibly a top three. Um, I don't know if we're going to get to number one here or a four foot rise, but uh, it's going to be close and around St. Pete as the storm surge warnings will stay in place. Storm surge watches a little further north. A uh, two to four foot forecast a water rise here, at least um, as we head on through and especially as we get closer to high tide. If that wind stays in that direction out of the southwest um, and continue to push water in here by the mid and later part of the morning hour. So we'll have to keep continuing to watch this. 1152 at St. Pete is the next high tide here this morning. Um, this morning, the tide is coming down over the next few hours will be at low tide. So this is something we'll have to keep an eye on. Tampa Bay at noontime today. As those winds are still coming in from that direction, the south southwesterly direction, but a weaker wind may help just a little bit, but something we're going to have to keep an eye on. Uh, the rip current risk is high, obviously, here and here out across the southeast coast of Florida. Um, some of these dangerous rip currents, as you know, we're not recommending you get into the water, but you know, there's always those that do, Todd, um, especially where the weather may be improving in south Florida. Some may dare to go in, but take it easy out there. And it's also not going to just be a Florida thing, too. I mean, uh, it's going to be dangerous to be in the water up and down the eastern seaboard as well as far as the rip currents. Now, uh, before Ada arrived along uh, Florida's west coast, or the Gulf Coast, winds sent the sailboat into a bridge in Pine Island. The incident closed the bridge for several hours as rescuers worried that the mast would snap and fall onto um, bridge traffic. The owner of the boat was trying to help a friend when the high winds pushed them both into the bridge. The waves battered the boat in the dock, causing some minor damage there. Let's take a look at some of the current wind and wind gusts at the moment. Now, at this very moment, doesn't mean that it's going to continue this way, but at this very moment, we're looking at winds just shy of a tropical storm of force strength. That's normally 39 mile an hour, um, at least in order to reach tropical storm force uh, winds. Now, again, we're one mile an hour shy of that, so I'm not trying to undermine the winds there in Tampa. But what we are seeing that the wind speeds will may gradually end up lowering a bit as we head through the morning hours. But again, it's still very dangerous storm surge and also a very dangerous rain. We can still see some heavy amounts of rain in around I-75 right now. And again, another couple of cluster, another couple of bands will head its way on through during the morning hours. So water is not a good thing, whether it's falling from above or pushing in from the uh, Gulf side. Uh, farther off to the north and east, uh, the rain isn't as heavy. We had a couple of uh, stronger bursts of rain uh, and around Lincoln up toward Leesburg, and it's still out there. But uh, as far as what we've seen as far as radar, maybe about an hour or so ago, it's not as uh, strong. But again, the worst conditions now heading up uh, close to the I-95 corridor and uh, affecting areas farther off to the north and east. So a big rain event happening now into the eastern side of the state. And we still got to deal with the uh, tropical storm force wind gusts. And again, uh, the best opportunity for that will especially be in around here from Cedar Key over to Jacksonville, where the most likely area for the center circulation will be from Ada as it works away on shore. So tropical storm force winds are already impacting many areas. Orlando already starting to see that farther uh, inland. Yeah, Jacksonville, we're going to end up seeing it uh, before dawn today. We'll see the tropical storm force wind gusts there. As far as landfall itself, we're thinking maybe around that 6, 7, 8 o'clock time period, maybe even a touch earlier, depending on if it makes a little uh, bit of a jog to the northeast uh, or off to the north. Either way, by about 7 o'clock uh, this morning, at least our guidance showing it could be a bit on shore. But ja uh, Gainesville, again, tropical forest wind gusts here. Jacksonville, same type of thing. So the worst winds will be from an area basically from Cedar Key to Gainesville over toward uh, Jacksonville. But again, the heavier rains will already be pushing into areas along the I-95 corridor farther south race. So even though the winds may be worse farther north. I'm a little bit more worried about the rain that could also be out there along I-95 farther south. A very heavy rainfall as it's uh, going to be hooking up some of that tropical moisture with a front coming in. So we're enhancing the rainfall in the eastern Carolinas, especially uh, the track of Ada too, heading in that direction. So there may be a little bit more of a pull out of the Atlantic in terms of moisture into that front and the eastern Carolinas. But for now, the forecast track, uh, at least the center going right down the middle of our cone here, at least that's where it's forecast to go and weakening a bit here by the morning hours here. 
uh, Thursday morning, a 45 mile per hour tropical storm. And by the evening, Thursday evening, 40 miles per hour, still a tropical storm out over the western Atlantic. Uh, Jacksonville, your impacts now through Thursday afternoon, 25 mile per hour wind gusts. If you do get tropical storm force gusts, it'll be before noon. You've got to get the 39 miles an hour to get there. Rain to come less than an inch, so it does not look like a huge flash flood threat. But let's watch the forecast winds here closer to the center. Uh, Gainesville, 35 miles per hour. Palm Coast up to 40 miles an hour through 3, 4 o'clock. And then as we go through the mid-morning hours, watch it as we get to 30 in and around Jacksonville, maybe to 40 miles an hour with some of the higher gusts. But that should be about it as we watch the low, maybe emerge back out over open water here as a tropical storm. That's the forecast right now. And continue to take the wind away with it and the heavier rainfall. Notice. Most of the strongest winds are offshore as we get into the evening hours and rain in general about an inch to come in most spots, even including southeast Georgia. But further on up the coast, though, we are going to see some of that heavier rain. So let's see what the radar could look like as we go through this morning. Notice that the rain's not all that widespread. And as we watch the low come through and push on off, it's right about in this area by midday. Uh, we'll see the rain go with it and the gusty winds get taken away. And as we'd said, probably seeing less than an inch or two of rain in many places. We keep getting more and more video, and this is once again from uh, Pinellas County. Check out the storm surge happening this morning. Again, you got the winds there, but when you look on the ground, yeah, that's that water storm surge above a normally dry ground, and that is uh, from Ada. Now, it's close to making landfall later on this morning. This video here is from Saint, uh, is, uh, from John's Pass near Madeira Beach. So uh, still dealing with some dangerous conditions there as we take a look at the trends now. As far as uh, uh, Trop Storm Ada, we're starting to see uh, the trend still moving off to north. Again, th this advisor here was from 1 o'clock. So, again, some of these numbers here will be a little bit different uh, with the next update that will certainly come in our way. That's going to be at 4 o'clock a.m. But, uh, again, from the 1 o'clock advisory, we have 60-mile-an-hour winds around the center circulation moving north at 10 miles an hour. Wouldn't be surprised we have a little bit more of a northeast push uh, this morning. But we also have uh, the location, at least... Uh, from the one o'clock advisory, 65 miles north and northwest of the St. Petersburg of Florida. That is the center of circulation from Ada. The worst conditions already happening is by way of storm surge and uh, heavy rainfall farther inland. Now, uh, tropical storm warnings stretch all the way from Port Charlotte, but again, uh, really going to be targeting this area here as uh, that's where we're going to be the strongest winds could be from um, Ada as far as the winds around the center of circulation. So a good part from uh, Cedar Key to Gainesville over toward Jacksonville and even now up toward St. Mary's in Georgia. We're starting to see um, uh, and also the uh, Georgia coast. We're starting to see the worst conditions as far as the uh, wind speeds there. Now, uh, as we head through this morning, again, landfall is going to happen sometime uh, within a couple of hours from now. But by the time we hit later on this uh, Thursday evening, look at this, already by the afternoon hours, the PM hours, Ada, at least the circulation could be offshore again. But then that also brings the risk of some flooding and storm surge to Georgia coast and the Carolinas as well. But heavy rainfall still out there. Notice how it's really top heavy and really easterly uh, heavy here where the bulk of the uh, rainfall, the heaviest rains are out. But again, we're going to see these little bursts from time to time. South Florida, you are not out of the woods yet. We're going to see a couple more bands that could bring your way, uh, come your way. Certainly not something we need anymore in South Florida, considering that it's already been um, just inundated with rain uh, for a good part of this year. So flood warnings continue for uh, Pinellas County, Pasco, and Hillsborough. Uh, that
that is until 415 Eastern and uh, Standard Time, so we still have a couple hours left of the high water, even though you'll be running in and out of the bands of rain, Ray. Uh, we're not done yet, and that's why the flood warnings are tough, because a lot of times you see the rain come to an end, you think, oh, well, the worst is over. Well, no, you still have some flood warnings out there, and it's not only just the Florida thing. No, it won't be, and these flood alerts are extending further north, too, into the Carolinas, as we can see Washington, D.C. get some flooding, and even near Charlotte, some of this tropical moisture is going to head on off toward the north, and these two cities, be prepared. If you haven't gotten heavy downpours yet, you might. You might. And most of them running in double digits in terms of rainfall for the year above normal. Now, it's been a little bit of a break. It was a beautiful week last week. But now as we get into the latter part of this week, heavy rain in the forecast. And some of that heavy rains are already falling down near South Jersey and Delaware. And look at this line of flash flood warnings and advisories. Just multiple counties here, multiple impacts, including heavy rain and flooding that is occurring. Um, no flash flood warnings here. Well, yeah, there is kind of one dug in there around Bristol, but um, a little bit of a lonely action out across central and north and South Carolina. But this is all forecast to fill on in. Look at the rain coming down right around the Beltway right now in and around Washington, D.C. Very heavy rainfall, numerous flash flood. A warnings are in effect around Dover. We've got heavy rain with flash flooding occurring at all these areas in green, the light green, the dark green. What's the difference, right? Flood watches of uh, flooding potential in and around the watch area. That's how they are defined. Now, when you get warnings, that's when you need to take action. Uh, watch the radar. Watch it blossom here. Look at this area rain forecast to fill on in right in the heart of when most people are going to be traveling here. If you are commuting to work, Raleigh down towards Charlotte, very heavy rainfall even around Columbia and South Carolina as we go through mid and late morning. Look at heavy rain, even embedded thunderstorms all the way up and down here are the areas from, let's say, southern Delaware in through eastern Maryland, southeast Virginia, around the Hampton Roads area, the eastern Carolinas, north and south Carolina included in that. Impacts to travel will be significant if this verifies and the heavier rainfall continue to push through to the tune of three to eight inches in this area in yellow and orange. Heavier areas or heavier spots of rain could be forecast here or could be coming in in some spots. And the threat for severe storms too. We can't rule out the chance of some stronger winds with some of these storms coming on in as we go through today, um, especially as that front gets closer. As we go through two o'clock this morning, though, some of these embedded thunderstorms probably stay below severe criteria. But as we go through the early morning and the midday hours, the eastern Carolinas, some of these storms, Todd, uh, could be severe. We don't think widespread, however. Yeah, so we keep thinking of Ada. Ada looks to be uh, that big water event for a good part of Florida, and not only Florida, but as Ray mentioned, a good part of the East Coast. Now, I want to show you the bigger perspective here. We have a big Bermuda High sitting here. That's one of the reasons why we are uh, looking at Ada and a lot of the um, tropical moisture streaming up and down the East Coast here. But if you look at the bigger per perspective, Ada, here we are. We're heading toward mid-November. Now, again, we're still in, uh, we're still technically in uh, the Atlantic Basin hurricane season, but we have another tropical storm, Tropical Storm Theta, that is out well out over the uh, central and even eastern Atlantic. And look at this, yet another invest. Another system could be developing, could be named shortly over in the Western Caribbean. I'm going to take a quick look at Tropical Storm Theta. Again, 60 mile an hour winds here, uh, just, uh, just the southwest of the Azores, actually moving not along the easterlies, but actually heading to the east. It's going to end up fizzling in around the Canary Islands. And then as we take a look at the Invest 98L, would not be surprised. This one becomes our next named system already well into the uh, Greek alphabet. If it does end up being named, it could be named IOTA, once again heading toward Central America. We have more coming your way. Black Friday. In these tropical storms, that you know, the a tornado is is really, you know, your your worst case scenario. Uh, a lot of that weather was on shore, you know, early today, and so people were driving through that. Storm Ada now hours away from landfall in Florida this morning. Storm surge, damaging wind gusts and flooding will remain a concern today as this record breaking Atlantic hurricane season continues our around the clock live special coverage continues right now. Well, thanks for joining us here early on a Thursday morning. I'm meteorologist Ray Staging and I'm meteorologist Todd Boric. Amazing uh, weather coming our way and coming through Florida as well. Let's take a look at more video here.
You hear that? There was a transformer exploding, uh, exploding in the background. This was uh, taken from Treasure Island, Florida. More than 16,000 statewide are without power. And uh, two inches of rain has uh, been reported falling, at least in this area. In the last six hours, flood warning does remain in effect until 4.15 a good chunk of uh, this region. In addition, well, we got to deal with a uh, storm surge as well. So uh, this is just an ongoing thing. The season keeps going and well, it, each storm is a bit different. This storm with Ada, uh, this is more of a water event. Obviously, the winds are an issue because the wind is what's causing the storm surge, but uh, it's all about the rising water, not only uh, from the rain falling, but also uh, coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. Now, the numbers is from the 1 o'clock advisory. In fact, the new advisory coming our way uh, for the 4 o'clock hour. In fact, it would not be surprised it uh, happens sometime later this hour, an update, but for sure by uh, 4 o'clock we'll have night, uh, another update here. But the last uh, up advisory, 1 o'clock, 60 mile an hour winds, pressure holding 994. Millibars moving north of 10, 10 miles an hour. The location is 65 miles north northwest of St. Petersburg, Florida. Of course, this is a couple hours ago, so that will easily be a bit different next time. So, tropical storm warning stretch from Port Charlotte all the way up to Cedar Key and then off to the north and east, spreading into now some uh, parts of the coastal parts of uh, Georgia. So we are going to be seeing those winds uh, reach uh, tropical storm strength, possibly as we head uh, through the morning hours, even before sunrise for many areas, uh, making landfall later on this morning and then eventually working its way off to sea, potentially by this afternoon where it becomes a big uh, uh, storm surge threat now for Georgia and the uh, Carolina coast. Now, as far as rainfall, heavy rain is still uh, falling. We have still have some flood warnings. They're out mainly for the uh, Tampa St. Pete area. Orlando, Daytona Beach still seeing some heavy rain, not quite seeing any uh, flood uh, issues at least yet as far as the uh, flooding advisories, but a flood warning still continues from Hillsborough, uh, Pasco and uh, Pinellas counties. Uh, that is until 415 Eastern Daylight Time. Whatever you do, do not allow yourself to drive through this. Uh, obviously, a lot of people are still at home, obviously, obviously because we're early morning. Uh, wait this out. Wait for the flood waters to recede. Estimated rainfall is anywhere from 3 to 5 inches in the yellow shaded areas, upwards of 5 to 8 inches uh, for areas shaded in orange. And uh, if you look at some of the local storm reports, broadcast media reported uh, that uh, the water was spilling over the seawall and a coffee uh, pot by you. So uh, yeah, that has been completely flooded. Uh, pot, uh, coffee pot uh, Boulevard is uh, completely flooded. So Ray, again, this is a big water issue for Florida and we still have the storm surge threat that's out there and that's going to be the biggest uh, issues that we're dealing for Tampa St. Pete. So even though the rain may not be as heavy anymore, uh, storm surge is still be an issue. Yeah, the rain becoming a bigger problem as you head further on up toward the north and northeast, but driving in this type of weather not advised. Uh, you can see the strong wind gusts and in Tampa right now gusting about 40 miles an hour, so they are coming down. And there's flooding happening currently downtown Tampa. The Riverwalk is underwater. Nearly two and a half inches of rain has been reported in the last six hours. So a rain's been coming down from the sky. It's been coming in from the Gulf and uh, the top five, actually top four in terms of water rise. I think now the latest is 3.47 in Tampa Bay, St. Pete. So uh, certainly an event that'll go in the record books as uh, one of the higher storm surge events. Flash flood watches stay in place. This is for additional rainfall and maybe some additional flooding, but there's been flooding ongoing here in South Florida, Southeast Florida, anyway, out across Broward, Miami Dade counties. Um, it actually bringing significant rainfall over a foot and a half in some spots in Southeast Florida and more rain on the way. We could see more showers and thunderstorms here out across South Florida through the early morning hours. But then the trend will be for less rain as we head through the day as Ada comes on shore uh, over the next few hours and then back out over the open water of the western Atlantic. So a lot of the rain has been on the east side. So that means a lot of the rain, at least initially, is going to be on the east side of the storm. Another inch or two, maybe up to three inches around Orlando. That'll be the heaviest here this morning. Uh, most spots will see less than that as we go on through the day. Cedar Key, 35 mile per hour wind gusts this morning. Rain to come is going to be probably less than an inch. So uh, at least in terms of rain coming down, doesn't look like we've got too much in the way of additional rainfall falling. Um, about an inch or two inches here. Lakeland, you could see some heavier rainfall. But as in terms of additional flooding from rain, it doesn't look like that threat is significant. It's not zero, but if it is, it's going to be northeast now of Tampa, who you still may see some tropical storm force wind gusts here early through the afternoon hours as the low goes to your north on the back side. Some of those winds may start whipping around, but less than an inch of rain is expected and that rainfall coming here over the next couple of hours in Bradenton 25 35 mile per hour wind gusts will occur the strongest this morning um, still lessening this afternoon but still could be in that 25 mile per hour range also here we are looking at less than an inch 
of rainfall for you. So some of these areas are going to see some gusty winds to tropical storm force 40, maybe 50 miles an hour, Todd, but very little left in terms of falling rain. As far as impacts, Ada has been uh, packing a punch in southwest Florida. It's winds causing a boat to slam into a bridge. And Claire uh, Levzorio with affiliate WBBH in Fort Myers has a story. Uh, this kind of caught us by surprise. This is crazy. It just keeps coming around. The effects of Ada are felt on the island community of Matt Lachey. Manager of Bridgewater Inn, John Tobin, capturing this video of a sailboat tossed into the Matt Lachey Bridge. The bridge closing down for assessment by the DOT before opening back up to drivers. Tobin describing what he saw. These boats that are moored out here in the bay started breaking loose. And then one by one, they started coming past our property. One smashed into the bridge. This other boat destroying the inn's dock, which is the livelihood of the business. Several others sunk nearby. I hope this is the finality right here. Woody Gunther is a seasonal resident on the island. Almost halfway through November, he didn't expect this. Normally we come down in November like this and it's really nice. It's really nice boating and fishing and uh, this is just unexpected. Yeah, Ada has uh, been very interesting to say the least. It'd be one of those storms I think a lot of uh, study will be done on this just uh, for the simple fact that it's just ended up reaching and uh, making landfall over Central America, then it backtracked and now it's making its way uh, toward Florida, making yet a third landfall because, of course, it made landfall across the Keys early on this week. Now, uh, as we take a look at what's happening, the biggest issues right now are twofold, really. The flooding rains are happening in uh, parts of Florida, but even more so up the Appalachians. But we still have some storm surge flooding now. And again, it's all about the direction of the winds, the fetch, and the way that we're actually looking at the winds blowing right up into Tampa Bay and uh, still bringing some um, high water out here. Now, over the last couple of hours, the trend has been lowering a bit. We're heading toward astronomical low tide uh, that's going to around the 6 o'clock hour. It's still dangerous conditions out there. We're still looking at at least a knee-high water in many areas. Uh, 2.7 foot uh, storm surge uh, flooding in Old Port, Tampa. St. Pete right around 2.2 uh, feet. Uh, Clearwater Beach uh, just about a third of a foot. Uh, I would not be surprised though that we end up seeing the wind starting to be a little bit more uh, pushing out of the north. So I would not be surprised that northern parts of the bay could get in on some uh, storm surge flooding as we had later on this morning as the winds start to turn a bit more. But right now, though, still coming out of the south and west. So widespread storm surge uh, warnings from Fort Myers all the way up towards Cedar Key. So that will continue to be an issue, uh, at least for coastal regions. Two to four foot storm surge potential is certainly there. But notice even as high as one to uh, two feet all the way down to far south Florida on the western on the Gulf side. Now, talk about the tide cycle. St. Pete, uh, we have low tide officially uh, right around 5.35 a.m. Then heading back toward a high tide cycle. Uh, later on this morning. And again, we don't want those winds still out of the uh, north or out of the southwest by that time because, again, the storm surge flooding could just start uh, rising back up again. Same type of thing for Tampa uh, Bay itself. We have um, heading toward a, a low tide cycle at around 551 a.m. So storm surge uh, in the, uh, is out there. Now the rip current risk is certainly there as well. Anytime you have a tropical storm about ready to hit landfall, you really don't want to be in the water if it's your state that's being impacted by that. But it's not only just Florida, not only the Gulf side ray. We have a high rip current risk for the Gulf side, but also we have a strong area of high pressure out over the Atlantic Ocean. So now look at this. Of course, on the eastern side of the state, we have rip current risk, and that does extend up into Georgia. Would not be surprised we see that in the Carolinas as well as your Thursday progresses. And still some wind to deal with too here as uh, the winds are staying just below tropical storm force uh, and around Tampa Bay, but um, still uh, gusty winds blowing things around here as we get in through uh, the early morning hours. A uh, gust here at McDill Air Force Base, 36 miles per hour, Lakeland 23. So uh, not terrible, but enough. And we're throwing insult onto injury here with more showers and thunderstorms uh, coming on in here on the backside or uh, the southern edge of uh, what is Ada, a tropical storm further north. You can kind of see that outer edge here. It looks like that's the outer edge of uh, at least the center. Um, center's probably located out in this area somewhere uh, near Crystal River. We are getting gusts of 30 miles per hour. Uh, okay about 30 miles an hour. So this is most likely the area we may see these winds pick up here as we go through the next few hours as the center of Ada gets closer to and tries to bend on in to the north and east. So tropical storm force winds here this morning um, lessening though and probably getting close to tropical storm force further northeast, but that threat will lessen as you go 
further north into the Carolinas and southeast Georgia. If they do get to Jacksonville, it'll be by about 8 o'clock this morning. But I think with each passing hour, the winds will be weakening just a bit. So might be minimal tropical storm force winds further north and northeast. And as we said, at about 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock this morning, notice the center here, according to this model, getting pretty close to Cedar Key. So 40 plus mile per hour wind gusts. 40 to maybe 50 around Jacksonville through this morning. Uh, the early morning hours is when we're expecting to see some of those stronger winds. Uh, mid morning, they slacken off a bit, but still, we could go gust of 40 into the early afternoon. So this could blow some things around, especially some of the high profile vehicles. If you are traveling, uh, two hands on the steering wheel and uh, no slouch here, we get 20, 30 mile per hour wind gust in central Florida this morning into the early afternoon as we watch Ada weaken and then through this evening uh, we're watching those winds come out of the west and the northwest now and light winds expected to come through uh, most of the state here. But the strongest winds this morning, as we said, continue to try to get water into Tampa Bay. Uh, 30, 35 mile per hour wind gusts in some spots. Tampa maybe to 40 miles an hour early. And then as we go through the morning and the afternoon, slackening a bit, 20, 25 mile per hour wind gusts and then a little less through later today and into the nighttime hours tonight, Todd. So the winds will lessen, but tropical storm force winds still being felt here over the next few hours. Yeah, so we continue to wait for uh, Ada to make its third landfall officially. Of course, that's going to be uh, somewhere uh, near Cedar Key, perhaps. We're going to be keeping an eye on that. Now, uh, of course, as it continues to work its way toward the Big Bend, uh, we're going to be seeing impacts places like, well, Jacksonville. You're already going to be starting to see the uh, uh, winds pick up a bit. Right now, current wind speeds at 14 miles an hour. We're not be surprised, like Red mentioned, we get a little bit closer to that 30, maybe 35 mile an hour gust, possibly even higher than that. As we head through later on this morning, uh, those tropical storm force wind gusts could be there as well. Let's take a look at the uh, path. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer. And uh, right now, expected to see Ada to be somewhere in this uh, fan here. Notice it's a much more narrow uh, look here because, well, of course, we're just looking later on today. But notice how fast it really begins to pick up that forward uh, speed. So landfall, uh, really not too long from now, but by the time we hit this afternoon during the PM hours, we could see Ada already offshore at this time. And a lot of times you're thinking, well, good, it's already out the sea, may not be any impact. So, well, that's not going to be the case. Really going to be dealing with some uh, major flood issues, uh, particularly from storm surge and also uh, just from high tides and also from the about to heavy rainfall uh, from Georgia, more so through the Carolinas. So very much concerned that this is going to be a big rain event uh, for areas uh, in along the coast, uh, along the Atlantic side as well. As we take a look at the uh, uh, forecast wind gusts, again, this is just guidance, doesn't mean it's going to be exactly this, but we still can see uh, right around uh, close to trop storm force winds. I would not be surprised we have a little gust here and there could make it to 40, 45. But for the most part, looking at a 25, 30 uh, mile an hour gust as we head through your morning commute. And then, uh, well, here we are by later on this afternoon, still a 15, 20 mile an hour uh, wind there in uh, Jacksonville. And then even through the overnight hours, Still maybe a bit breezy as the wind's now coming in from the north and west, but certainly drier air will certainly be there. We still have the potential for at least upwards of an inch or so of rain uh, in areas like uh, Jacksonville. A little bit farther south again, we're tapping into more of that uh, Gulf Mexico moisture, so that's why we still have a potential of maybe one, two, possibly a little pocket of uh, three inches of rain in uh, around uh, central uh, uh, Florida and around Orlando. So as we head through the rest of this morning, again, this is just a guidance, not going to be exactly like this, but uh, this is why we're still concerned about flooding because even though circulation may be making its way onshore in North Florida, we have a couple of heavier bands along I-95, so we could still see some heavy rainfall in uh, Melbourne, also down into South Florida, where we don't need any more rain. Well, it could still happen. As we head later on this morning through the afternoon, we'll see the activity begin to taper, more scattered variety of storms, and by the time we head late this afternoon, uh, maybe a hit or miss isolated shower here or there, but that's really going to be about it as far as the rainfall goes uh, into Florida. So as we head through the rest of the morning, Ray, it's going to be one of those things we're going to have to be really concerned about the flash flood issue, particularly in the South Florida, even though there's a circulation well off to the north. Here's what we know right now as uh, Ada continues to get closer to the west coast of Florida, the University of Florida and the University of South Florida suspending classes today. Hart, the public transportation hub for Hillsborough County plans to resume service at noon today, weather permitting. Uh, Pinellas County buildings and offices do remain closed today. So as Ada gets close here over the next couple of hours to making landfall, we'll continue to track it through the morning hours. And as we go on through the day, we've got crews uh, lined up in the path of the storm to take you through this as we go through this morning. Uh, Jim Kintori, Mike Seidel and uh, Reynolds Wolf out there uh, to get the lingering impacts here in and around Tampa Bay as Look at the storm surge. Still got some water rise here in Tampa Bay with gusty winds to tropical storm force continuing over the next few hours. Let's.
This record-breaking hurricane season isn't over. The threat from Ada is still complex and dangerous to the southeast. Big, big rainfall stretching from Miami all the way over to the west coast of Florida. No one can cover this historic hurricane season better than the Weather Channel. Get the information you need to stay safe all week long right here on the Weather Channel. Got some new video in here to the Weather Channel. Storm surge flooding in Gulfport, Florida. And look at that water rise here. Reports of knee high deep water near the casino. Storm surge warning does remain in effect as it continues to track north and eventually here soon should start taking a little bit of a jog toward the east. But check that out. Um, getting the car pushed. Notice there was somebody pushing that car. Why? You ask, well, most likely that vehicle tried to cross a water covered roadway, which we tell you is a no, no. You just never know how deep that water is. So as we continue to watch Ada continue to move north and watch that trajectory push off toward the east, um, we're probably going to see a landfall here within the next couple of hours. Uh, as long as it continues to move north, it may delay it just a bit. 60 mile per hour storm right now should get another update from the Hurricane Center here shortly. But notice how we're starting to see the colder cloud tops. That's the oranges and the reds get blown away from the center now as a little bit more shear is occurring with these west northwesterly winds starting to come in upstairs in the atmosphere. So start to pull away some of the stronger storms in and around the center, but the center still forecast to track out across North Florida and get pretty close to Southeast Georgia and then out of, over the waters of um, the Western Atlantic. Still a tropical storm though, at least that's forecast through this evening. Tropical storm warnings stay in place. Watches near Fish Creek to Cedar Key. Uh, tropical storm conditions are possible here over the next few hours with storm surge warnings staying in effect here for Florida's West Coast. Tampa and Sarasota Todd are included in that. Speaking of Sarasota, well, look at this. This is uh, what it looks like in Sarasota. At least it looked like as far as storm surge, wind gusts topping 50 miles an hour at times. Now, Sarasota Police Department reporting that they have restricted traffic on and off the island to residents and emergency traffic only. A storm surge warning does continue to be in effect, and that's the reason why we do not uh, want to see people driving through floodwaters. You do not know how deep that water is. And uh, well, speaking of floodwaters, look at how this is not just a Florida thing. Now, what we're looking at here is not exactly directly uh, in, uh, involved with Ada. Ada has a little bit uh, to do with the amount of moisture here, but it's uh, really about the bigger pattern here. We have a large area of high pressure out over the Atlantic Ocean. We have this a very slow moving cold front. Uh, so we have a lot of moisture Now, of course that counter of the clockwise flow around the high is really bringing in a lot of Gulf of Mexico moisture and this somewhat of a tropical air mass is bringing a lot of rainfall. So now we have the cold front squeezing out the rain. So it's almost like you have this, this sponge that's been sitting and soaking a lot of water. And now that cold front is just wringing out the rain. And that's why we have a wide area of uh, flash flood watches. It's going to uh, pick a couple of areas here. And it's not only uh, some of the higher elevations, but we still have flash flood warning in effect until 430 here in uh, DeKalb, Fulton and Gwinnett counties in around the Atlanta metro area. So notice the rain isn't really falling right now, but that's all due to the heavy rain that has fallen. So flash flood warning does continue uh, looking out over in parts of uh, North Carolina. Just picked out an area here of Sampson and Wayne County flood advisory in effect until 4 a.m. So again, amount of rain is falling in um, a lot of areas here and even places like well, D.C. We have a flood warning out for Alexandra, um, uh, Fairfax and uh, Falls uh, Church, all cities being impacted here. So uh, Arlington uh, District of Columbia and Fairfax all under flood warnings until 5 o'clock. So uh, that's going to really hamper a lot of travel. I know a lot of people uh, will still be working from home or maybe even trying to go into work. Oh, this is a dangerous time because we have widespread uh, flood uh, watches uh, in around Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina. You can also see, as I just shown you, that uh, flood warnings still exist out there from a um, place like uh, D.C., Baltimore, seeing some heavy rain. So this is not just a Florida event. This is a, a big event that is uh, stretching all apart uh, uh, across parts of the southeast and the Carolinas, Ray, and into the mid-Atlantic. So this could be a dangerous day. I really have a feeling that uh, this area here, Virginia's through the Carolinas up through the mid-Atlantic could be in for some very rough uh, weather as far as the heavy rainfall in the next couple hours. And if you are in one of those flash flood watches, and especially if you get the warnings, um, that's where you're going to need to be prepared. The watch meaning be prepared for flooding. The warning means you're going to have to take action as uh, tropical downpours uh, will continue. What an unusual air mass for this time of year. It's warm, it's humid, it almost feels like the middle of the summer. And as the rain comes down, it's going to fall hard here in and around Charlotte. Um, notice as we go through this morning, 
Look at that, very heavy rainfall. That's what the yellow and red is indicating. So this is probably an inch an hour, maybe a little bit more in some spots. And embedded thunderstorms will enhance the rain. So it is going to be a rough commute. Do not cross water covered roadways. Slow your roll to through at least late morning around Charlotte and points east, especially that's where the rain will be falling hardest. Don't want to hide your plane. Certainly want to keep your visibility up too. Keep the wipers on high speed. Uh, inch or two of rainfall here. In some spots, there's going to be locally higher totals, especially as you go to the east, where three or four inches of rain could fall. And watching what the radar may look like this morning, east of Raleigh and in and around the Triangle. Heavy rainfall at times uh, filling in, if anything, through late morning and midday. Notice now we are east of Charlotte, but this is the area where we may get some heavy rain into early afternoon. Starting to taper off by later this evening, but hanging on around Raleigh. If the model verifies still through this afternoon and this evening, heavy rainfall, I think from Raleigh and Fayetteville and points east in North Carolina. This is the area of high concern where we start seeing some of that heavy rainfall right on through this evening. So general, maybe four to six inch rain event here, Raleigh three or four inches, but still Still, this is enough to cause flooding. That's why we're under flash flood watch. If you get into some of that heavier rainfall, those heavier bands and the embedded thunderstorms, you certainly could be in for a rough time as we go on through today. South Carolina, Columbia, heavy rain by 8 o'clock this morning, pushing on off toward the north and east. And as we had said, around Myrtle Beach, these are some of those areas that may see some heavier rainfall, uh, but tapering off as we head on through Thursday night. And yet more video here, and this is the reason why you should not be driving through floodwaters. This truck submerged in high water in Safety Harbor, Florida, and uh, well, we've seen more than four inches of rainfall that's certainly fallen. And uh, again, uh, this is going to be a scene that we may see more often, whether or not that happened from flash flooding and it wasn't expected, or they tried to drive through floodwaters. Uh, you just don't know how deep that water is, whether in a truck, a semi, or any type of a uh, smaller coupe. That's why it's dangerous to be dropped through flood water. So thanks for staying with us with a special round the clock coverage of Tropic Storm Ada. I'm meteorologist Todd Boric. And I'm meteorologist Ray Stajic as uh, we're probably a couple of hours here from landfall from Tropical Storm Ada, but Tropical Storm conditions do continue to pound places like Tampa and Fort Myers Beach. Uh, Got hit pretty good with a strong tropical storm. A flash flood watch will stay in effect until Friday in Fort Myers Beach, Tampa. You're dealing with several watches and warnings, including a storm surge warning. A tropical storm warning and a flash flood watch. Now warnings are meaning more eminent things occurring. We've had surge almost four feet in some spots at St. Pete. It looks like it's going to be a fourth highest water rise on record. Those records I think go back to 1991 is what I just read. Uh, the latest and another advisory coming up here shortly from the Hurricane Center. Uh, still a 60 mile per hour storm, 994 millibars moving north still at 10 miles per hour. So as long as it moves northerly, it stays away from the coast until it goes off to the west, at least we get the bend there in Florida, right? So if we keep that northerly trajectory a little bit later on landfall, then if we have a northeasterly direction, which it is forecast to do here eventually, and you can kind of see the winds upstairs steering the higher colder cloud tops away from the center. So that's the direction that we're going to see some of the upper level winds try to steer the storm. Tropical storm watches and tropical storm warnings in place for tropical storm force winds. That's a 39 plus miles per hour, and I'd be shocked if we get anything too much higher than 40, 50 miles per hour. If we get a 60, I think it's unreasonable at this point, but still enough to blow things around, maybe blow some small trees down and some power outages. Uh, I don't think widespread, but at least some, that's my guess. A 45 mile per hour tropical storm this morning. Look at by this evening over here on the right. Still 40 mile per hour tropical storm. It gets back out over open water. Uh, not forecast, at least in this time frame, to get too much stronger. But the impacts will be heavy rain and maybe enhancing the rain further north. Now, right now, just pushing offshore here in uh, looks like Broward and uh, Palm Beach counties. Some thunderstorms, more bands coming in near Fort Myers and a heavier band here around it just south southeast of Tampa Bay. Uh, that's why we've got this flash flood warning in place. We've had rain. We've got more rain coming in. Uh, Hillsborough, Pasco, Pinellas counties, Clearwater, St. Pete, the cities, including Tampa until 415. Flash flood warning, meaning that flooding eminent or is occurring, Todd. And we already know that in many of these places we do have high standing water. So any rain coming in certainly adding a little bit more in terms of dangerous conditions and flooding. Yeah, that's why we always talk about that turn around, don't drown. Check this out. More new video here showing the rough surf Ada is producing. High winds, storm surge pushing water inland, causing some flooding.
Strong winds gusting in Tampa right now. Still starting to see those winds gusting upwards of 35, 40 miles an hour. Nearly two and a half inches of rain have been reported in the last six hours. And that's the problem is that too much rain in a short period of time. Check out some of that video there. You can see uh, what that storm surge looks like. That is why it is so dangerous. Not only is though we're dealing with that storm surge, but also it is moving. The storm surge has a bit of a current as it's work its way on land as well. That's why it's a very dangerous situation. Now, widespread flash flood watches continue out there, meaning that the potential certainly there. We can see more in the way of flooding. And notice how uh, somewhat sporadic it is. Not only is it an area that's seeing, well, the major impacts from Ada right now, but also down into South Florida through Alligator Alley and into uh, parts of the Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach uh, region. One of the reasons why, well, Miami, uh, we're currently 24.2 two inches above rainfall average for the year. So we don't need any more rain in South Florida. Well, unfortunately, more rain's coming your way. That's why the flood watch is still out there. And the reason being, look at some of these outer bands that may be impacting South Florida. So again, it's not going to only be a North Florida thing. South Florida will get in on the rain as well. Uh, we do expect landfall shortly as uh, Ada will work its way on um, on shore, then eventually head its way through the Florida Peninsula. Again, the heaviest uh, rain still look to be uh, off to the east. But again, as we head through the morning hours, the uh, flood uh, Concerns are certainly there. Then, as it heads its way offshore, that becomes more of a uh, issue, particularly in a place like the coastal Georgia and the Carolinas, where we could see some storm surge issues there as well. So, uh, very much concerned about uh, a little bit more rain again, another inch or two for most areas. Maybe a quick little burst of two or three inches are certainly possible with the strongest cells. But again, here's the area I'm also concerned about because, yeah, again, in South Florida, we don't need any more rain. And unfortunately, more rain is there because, uh, well, we've had such a wet year with, again, many areas in South Florida, 20, 25, 28 inches above average as far as rainfall goes. So make sure you stick with us all morning long for our continuing co coverage of Chops from Ada. We have a live, live team out there giving you more info. That's what it looks like when you get storm surge flooding. Pinellas County, Florida, scenes like this. Playing out along the west coast of Florida, reports of waist deep water. The storm has dropped over four inches of rain on Thursday. Top on that, or put on top of that, the storm surge up to five feet. That's really been causing problems here. Um, so, yeah, a tropical storm that started shifting a little further east and a favorable wind trajectory, uh, bringing that water rise into Tampa Bay and around St. Pete. So, these are areas that experience a uh, top five and in some cases even some record water rises as information continues to trickle on in here this morning. Here are some of the records. Um, Elena in St. Petersburg back since March 1991, a four foot water rise. So storm surge there, but with Ada will be right now in the top four as a 3.47 official water rise. But these around Old Port Tampa in Florida actually are records and now the highest we've seen in terms of surge from Ada, 3.87 feet. All right, now this only goes back to 1991, but still, we're talking about a storm here that put us in the top spot for water rise around Old Port Tampa. So once again, doesn't necessarily take a hurricane to produce this kind of water rise. That's why storm surge warnings are still in place for the wind coming in out of the southwest and pushing the water into Tampa Bay, two to four foot storm surge potential still existing, especially during high tide later this morning. As that wind direction here, as we go on through the mid and latter part of the morning around, Tampa Bay continues to be in a favorable direction to push water into the Gulf of Mexico. So those winds won't be as strong, so probably not setting any new additional records, at least I don't think. And even as we head on through this evening, we'll continue to see some of those winds uh, be fairly strong out of the south and keep the rip current risk high also. So that rip current risk does exist even further north up near Jacksonville. So as you get into, and if you are going to get into the water, um, you know, it's going to be rough out there and certainly going to have a rip current risk uh, a little bit higher than normal, even around places like South Beach, where we actually may see the sun try to shine today, especially this afternoon, Todd. And that's how fast this uh, system is going. And now before Ada arrived, uh, check this out. This is uh, on the Gulf side of Florida. Winds uh, sent the sailboat into a bridge in Pine Island. The incident closed the bridge for several hours as rescuers worried the mast would snap and fall onto the bridge traffic. Owner of the boat was trying to help a friend. And the high winds pushed them both into the bridge. Waves battered the boat and the dock, causing some minor damage there. So uh, I want to show you uh, some of the bands that are still heading its way on through a place like Tampa over into Lakeland. As far as the winds go, most winds, at least right now, gusting anywhere from 30 to 36 miles an hour. Uh, 
and from Tampa over towards Sarasota, St. Petersburg, uh, uh, and also into Lakeland Clearwater, coming in with a gust of about 22 miles an hour. Farther off to the north, this is going to be an area I think we may see some somewhat stronger winds. Uh, right now, Leesburg at uh, 37 mile an hour wind gusts, Orlando at uh, 26. And notice a couple of the heaviest bands well off to the east, but every now and then we're going to get a couple of these uh, other showers and storm, uh, that could pop up. Not seeing much in the way of thunderstorms at all, but it's just mainly just a heavy rain event and prob uh, probability of tropical storm far force winds gusts, of course, already happening into um, parts of uh, central and north Florida. But uh, as we head into the later morning hours, we could see it starting to stretch its way over to Jacksonville. Uh, notice again how the numbers begin to drop downwards. So now we're going from uh, 80, 90 percent chance of tropical storm force winds. Now the uh, numbers here as it heads toward Jacksonville, now we're in that 40 to 50 percent range. So it does show that this system will really begin to uh, lose a lot of its punch as well as the winds go, but still going to be a big threat as far as the potential for some uh, high water out there due to storm surge. Now, this is, again, just a guidance. Would not be surprised once we get uh, new information in from the uh, center that we could be seeing landfall from Ada really shortly here. And again, there's the potential for some wind gusts. Could it be up, upwards of 40 to 50 mile an hour? Uh, the possibilities there, but I think we're fall falling more in that 30 to 40 mile an hour range. But again, that's still enough to uh, take down a couple of uh, tree limbs. And uh, if we've been dealing with some weakened trees from earlier, yeah, we may have to deal with a, a couple of tree down, uh, trees down here and there. As we head into the morning hours, the uh, winds will still be out there, but then eventually into the afternoon, really, 30, 40 mile an hour winds possible for Jacksonville, but for the most part, notice how everywhere uh, dealing with the stronger winds now are starting to see that 15 to 20 mile an hour wind gusts from the Gulf side of Florida. And then as we head in the evening hours, the gusts should be winding down. Again, we still have that potential for some winds gusting in around the Tampa area around 20 to 25 miles an hour as we head through uh, the morning hours. But right now, not a good time to be out in Florida as the flooding waters still remain. And we'll continue to track it as it makes a landfall here over the next couple of hours. Um, pretty close to sunrise, depending on when we see that northeast turn. It's going to be pretty close to Cedar Key. At least that's what Hurricane Center is thinking. Uh, picture the center and landfall being somewhere around the middle of the cone. And as we head on off toward the daytime hours today, still a tropical storm through the afternoon and this evening. And the impacts being mainly some gusty winds to tropical storm force, maybe a little bit higher uh, in places like Jacksonville this morning. Rainfall, really not a big threat here. Uh, most likely looking at less than an inch of rain in places like uh, Jacksonville. So your strongest wind gusts starting to move on in um, through this morning, 20, 30 miles per hour. Some of the stronger gusts get to 35 around Palm Coast and then midday into the early afternoon as we watch a center pass um, backing off on some of the winds to back 15 to 20 miles per hour with some of the stronger gusts. So uh, worst here in north, northeast Florida, probably going to be in the first part of the morning hours and into at least midday. The rain, though, really not all that heavy, up to an inch in some spots. A uh, one to two inches now the forecast here from Orlando and back toward Winter Haven. So although there may be some minor flooding in some spots, this doesn't look like to be a heavy rain flooding event, although at times, according to what the radar thinks is going to happen, um, there may be some pockets of heavy rain, even around Melbourne here. Uh, there may be a one or two showers, thunderstorms that may briefly dump some heavy rain that could, could continue into the afternoon as some of these kind of pockets of isolated showers and thunderstorms try to work on through. So we are looking at the chance of seeing some more additional rainfall and some strong winds here as we track Ada. But uh, for the most part, we are looking at most of the rainfall pushing further north as we watch what's left of Ada kind of enhance the rain with a front coming in out across the mid-Atlantic states. So we'll continue to watch that and we're going to cover some of that flooding and some of that heavy rain potential further on up the coast here as we head on through the daytime hours today. It uh, looks like some very heavy rain in the forecast for parts of the Carolinas and places like Raleigh shown here.
Uh, check out the storm surge happening a little earlier. This is in uh, Pinellas County, Florida. Ada was so close to making landfall there. It came close. But you can see the water that is um, being pushed on shore. We talk about storm surge. That is uh, water that is above normally dry ground that's being pushed on shore. This particular uh, video here is in uh, Madaria Beach. And you can see the flooding waters there. And again, uh, notice how the winds continue to push that water. And yeah, in some areas, you can see it upwards knee high, maybe upwards at waist high as uh, we had in the uh, pre dawn hours for your uh, Thursday. Now, uh, these numbers are going to be updated very shortly. This is from the 1 o'clock um, advisory. So really, the, the next advisory, really just minutes away from now, we're going to see a big uh, change in uh, these numbers, particularly, uh, I'm thinking, as far as the uh, direction that uh, Trump's from is going. So the, the prior advisory, in fact, the new advisor is just actually coming out right now. I'm going to glance off here and look. We actually, oh, no, that's the Trump's from Theta, my mistake. Uh, either way, though, uh, the numbers are going to be coming out very shortly. I would not be surprised we see the direction change instead of out of the north, maybe out of the north and east, but even more so uh, the um, uh, wind speeds could also be changing from Ada. And you can also see what's happening here. We're starting to see the upper level winds really blow a lot of the uh, um, uh, cloud tops, the colder cloud tops now well toward the eastern side of the state. So uh, starting to see some big time shearing going on here with Ada. And that's why we have that idea that's going to be pushing off to the north and east eventually. So widespread tropical warnings uh, stretch for a good part of the Gulf side of Florida from uh, Port Charlotte all the way up towards Cedar Key and as far north and east in places like Jacksonville and even in the coastal areas of uh, Georgia at this time as well. So as uh, Ada will make a uh, landfall uh, shortly and then eventually work his way uh, through Florida into maybe even uh, skirting parts of southeast Georgia and then eventually make his way out in the open, open Atlantic waters basically by uh, Thursday afternoon, later on this afternoon. So we still have some flood warnings that uh, exist out there, really at least for the next uh, half hour or so. Hillsborough, Pasco, and uh, Pinellas counties, we still have some high water there due to the banding of rain and due to all the heavy rainfall we've seen so far today. Storm surge uh, right now at uh, 2.3 uh, feet in Old Port, Tampa. So already been breaking records as far as the storm surge uh, flooding. Uh, water is beginning to recede a bit as we're heading toward astronomical low tide. And so we're still dealing with some high water Water there, although it hasn't been as bad now as it has been at least uh, recently, Ray, but uh, still some of the issues out there with flooding and certainly don't want to see people be driving through these floodwaters because that's a dangerous thing. We've already seen many videos of uh, cars being stranded because they try to get way on through. Yeah, my guess uh, says that we're going to see more of that uh, further on up the coast as we get into the Carolinas and the Mid-Atlantic, uh, Charlotte, Washington, D.C. If that temperature is accurate right now in Charlotte, it says 80 degrees. Now, I'm not quite sure that that's it could be. I mean, it's got to be close. I just know it feels like summertime in these two cities and downpours are on the way. You are running well above average, over a foot above average in terms of rainfall for the year. So more on top of what has already come this year is certainly going to cause big problems. So uh, the rain coming down. It's coming down hard in a couple of places here. I got one batch lined up uh, basically just to the west or right along I-95 and one to the east. Now very heavy rain in these areas and all those little kind of like different shades of green boxes that you see are individual counties or counties that are under flash flood warnings or advisories. Uh, numerous counties around Washington, D.C., uh, just north of Richmond, very heavy rainfall has been coming down. Um, you're up, you're getting ready to get out this morning. If you're heading out early, there is going to be ponding of the water on the roadways. There will be some spots that get additional flash flooding. Even down here in the Hampton Roads area, that looks like a warning. Down here east of Raleigh, multiple warnings out. Very heavy rain is going to run right across these areas for multiple hours. So this is where the risk will be great. Greatest. If you're shaded in green, you have the threat for flash flooding. If you get the warnings, that's when you need to take action, and flash flooding is more eminent. Flood watches, Asheville, Boone, Charlotte, Greensboro. Uh, you're in a flash flood watch too, as the flood watch, flood warning, basically the same thing or pretty close to it as flooding is possible. Um, the model picks up pretty good on this little low in the action here in the band here and the band here of heavy rainfall. So let's see what it does. Look at this. It's almost like the two areas converge as we go through this morning from Charlotte to Raleigh and become one big mass of rainfall. And that's going to continue to produce very dangerous travel here in through central and eastern North Carolina, southeast Virginia into the Hampton Roads area. Get in Delaware here too. Don't want to forget about you. Delaware, Eastern Maryland, around Chesapeake Bay. Now, places like New York City and Boston, it looks like you're just on the northern fringe of that heaviest rainfall. So the heavier rain just to your south as you head on down south on the Jersey Turnpike and head down near, uh, let's say, Cape May and into Jersey. But by this afternoon, especially tonight, that heavy rain hanging around here in eastern North Carolina.
Carolina, Todd. So certainly is going to be some heavy tropical rainfall in parts of the Carolinas. You know, I, I just checked when you uh, mentioned that. Yeah, uh, Charlotte right now, at least officially at the airport, 72 degrees, dew point at 70. One of the reasons why this all area is being hit so hard with the rain. Uh, bigger perspective here, we're not only talking about tropics from Ada. There's actually, well, another tropical system out there. It's, it's so... 2020. Here we are heading toward mid-November. We have not uh, one but two tropical storms and yet a third one that could be named. This could end up here. The Western uh, Caribbean could end up being Iota. Really good chance of that. But tropical storm Theta continues to churn out over the uh, open waters of the Atlantic Ocean, actually heading well, eastward. It's currently uh, southwest of the Azores and, uh, well, may end up stalling it around uh, just to the north of the Canary Islands. But it's still amazing to think that we not only have that storm, but yet another one here, Invest 98L. There's potential for it to become yet another named storm. In fact, the latest update of Ada just came up. Uh, 50 mile an hour winds moving northeast at 13 miles an hour. We'll give you more on the uh, new numbers from Ada when we come back. At the Welcome back to continued coverage of the Weather Channel. It is all about Ada. I am meteorologist Reynolds Wolf Cody from Clearwater Beach, Florida, where the skies are not clear. We have some scattered showers out. The bulk of the rainfall now moving to the eastern half of the state. But again, Ada still approaching parts of the Florida coastline, bearing in on spots like Cedar Key. For the very latest, let's go back to the studio with Todd Borg for our latest update. Uh, thank you, Reynolds. And yeah, breaking right now, latest advisory heads come out. And again, we're talking imminent landfall is really just moments away. Uh, latest numbers here as far as, far as the four o'clock um, advisory. Uh, Trumps from Ada, 50 mile an hour winds. But the key number here is right here, five miles. The location of the center is five miles east of Cedar Key, Florida. It is moving northeast at 13 miles an hour. So uh, again, we're just moments away from official landfall. Uh, you can really see the impacts with Ada and what has been happening. If you look at the cloud top, here again, you can really see how we're starting to see uh, the shearing and that steering that is uh, causing Ada to instead of moving off to the north, now taking that northeast shift where uh, we're starting to see a little bit of the uh, Florida coast begin to jet its way on out, and that is why we are looking at. Um, uh, landfall again, just really moments away. Pressure at 995 millibars again, moving northeast at 13 miles an hour. Trump storm uh, warnings again exist, but again, the worst conditions will be right around here with that center of circulation from Cedar Key up toward to Gainesville in over toward Jacksonville. But that doesn't mean that areas farther south are out of the danger yet because, uh, again, even in places like Clearwater Beach where uh, Reynolds Wolf is, uh, we are still looking at the possibility for some storm surge and also uh, some uh, rounds of some of those heavier bands of rain that can certainly come its way on through. So the wind threat is farther off to the north. The rain and flood threat continues to be a little bit farther down to the south as well. And as we head on through the morning hours again, just waiting for the official landfall to be uh, uh, called here. By the time we hit in the afternoon hours, somewhere uh, during the afternoon, we're going to be seeing uh, the uh, circulation of Ada, somewhat of more of a weakened state in around Jacksonville, maybe even parts of southeast Georgia. But this is then we start running into a problem as far as the storm surge and uh, flooding issues along the coast from places like Florida up through the uh, Carolinas. So it's not going to just be a Florida thing here. We still have some uh, flood warnings existing, and I would not be surprised we have some of these extended at least for a while, but at least right now, current flood warning for Hillsborough, um, Pasco, and uh, Pinellas counties. Uh, that is until 415 again, could easily be extended or shrunken down a bit, depending on where the heavier bands are. But some of the uh, worst uh, conditions out there, Reynolds, are uh, still uh, in where you are. As far as the rain bands, certainly not a, uh, it's been worse where uh, you were at least early on, but we're not quite done yet with the impacts, particularly in Clearwater Beach, Reynolds. Uh, you're absolutely right about that. You, you are indeed. You know, we got this weird time machine thing we refer to as video. Let's go back to 9 o'clock last night and show you this. This video confidence of the Weather Channel's own Mike Seidel. Yeah, jack of all trades. Got this video in and you really see the, the narrative this lays out for you. Heavens opening up, the rain coming down at Torrance. It was piling up in streets, on sidewalks. Uh, certainly, 
and uh, that's not the only story. You have a lot more. You got to think about the marriage that you have between land and water when it comes to places like Clearwater Beach or Tampa or St. Petersburg. Any place where you have land coming into contact with water, it is going to be compromised. In fact, there are a series of causeways. There's one we're going to talk about coming up in relatively short order where the leftbound lane or the eastbound lane rather has been compromised not only by water but also by debris piling up. And you're going to see that effect in a lot of places. Earlier this morning, I can also tell you we're at 1206. There was a report that came out of water rising in a trailer park right in Pinellas County. There were some water rescues and uh, since then the water in some cases beginning to recede, but in other places beginning to pile up. You know, Todd was talking about uh, places like, let's see, Cedar Key. I can tell you that in Cedar Key, it does not take a whole lot of water to cause problems in that beautiful village. They're being treated to some rough weather today, no doubt about it. I believe now we're sending it back to the studio. I think we're going back to Ray at this point. Yeah, Reynolds, thanks. And uh, yeah, certainly still going to see some impacts there. As Reynolds said, it's uh, still oh dark 30, but some gusty winds. And uh, I'd call it more squally as we'll get bands of showers still to come through around Tampa St. Peak. But as we continue to track Ada, uh, flash flood watches are still in place. And those watches for the potential for additional flooding ground saturated. So even out across the southeast Florida too, uh, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach. These are areas that if you do get additional rain, that rains on top of areas that seen a foot and a half of rain around Fort Lauderdale and around that area earlier in the week. Now watch the circulation come on shore here shortly and then move north northeasterly. But on the southeast side, you can continue to see at least some bands of rain. This is what's going to happen. The rain will come through and if you get it, it probably rains you know, for a few minutes. I mean, it's not going to be hours and hours of rain. I mean, that's really the message here. But as we go through the day in the afternoon, less and less in terms of rain. This is good news here down across South Florida. I uh, certainly don't want to see much in the way of heavier rainfall. Uh, now, continuing to update this map this morning, uh, the totals becoming less and less. An inch, maybe two inches of rain and some of the locally higher totals. That doesn't mean for everyone. But to get into this area here where we are seeing some of those heavier bands or the stronger bands and closer to the center, or displaced from the center where we've seen that heavier rain go, that's where you are going to have that threat for more significant flash flooding. So Cedar Key, now through this afternoon, 25 plus mile per hour winds, your strongest winds though this morning. As that center gets dangerously close here very shortly, and the rain to come is less than an inch now, as we've seen most of the thunderstorms get blown off to the north and east now, as we're starting to see that turn on off toward the northeast with the center of Ada. Rain still to come around Tampa, again, on average about an inch or so. There still may be some bands that come in that bring a few showers, but I think the heaviest rain is now over with after a pretty generous soaking for many 25 plus mile per hour wind gusts now through this afternoon around Tampa Bay. So notice we still have a prolonged period of strong winds and 35 mile per hour winds are still forecasting gusts through the afternoon. So occasionally we might get to tropical storm force, but the further away from us, the center gets obviously the less the wind we have and the less rain we have too, which some of those rain totals will be less than an inch. Bradenton strongest winds this morning, 35 plus, maybe the tropical storm force, but the rain top to come looks like it is going to be less than an inch. And uh, with that, Ada continues to pack a punch in Southwest Florida, even though landfall is just not that far away. And, uh, well, the winds caused the boat to slam into a bridge. Clara Lavazario with the affiliate WBBH in Fort Myers has a story. Uh, this kind of caught us by surprise. This is crazy. It just keeps coming around. The effects of Ada are felt on the island community of Matt Lachey. Manager of Bridgewater Inn, John Tobin, capturing this video of a sailboat tossed into the Matt Lachey Bridge. The bridge closing down for assessment by the DOT before opening back up to drivers. Tobin describing what he saw. These boats that are moored out here in the bay started breaking loose. And one by one, they started coming past our property. One smashed into the bridge. This other boat destroying the inn's dock, which is the livelihood of the business. Several others sunk nearby. I hope this is the finality right here. Woody Gunther is a seasonal resident on the island. Almost halfway through November, he didn't expect this. Normally we come down in November like this and it's really nice. It's really nice boating and fishing and uh, this is just unexpected. 
And as far as uh, Ada goes, well, we're still dealing with some uh, storm surge issues that are certainly out across uh, the region as well. Uh, very much concerned about how the winds are starting to stream its way on in uh, with this. Now, uh, as far as records go, and uh, the measuring's gone back uh, since uh, July of 1991, but uh, Ada is going to go down as, uh, well, the uh, bringing the record amount of storm surge flooding for Old Port uh, Tampa. Uh, we end up breaking a record there for today. Now, one thing I want to point out here, too, is that we still have the winds coming out of the uh, south and west, and that is why we still have some storm surge flooding in Old Port, Tampa. Now, the water levels have been slowly receding. We're heading toward astronomical uh, low tide. But one thing I want to also point out where Reynolds Wolf is at the moment in Clearwater Beach. Now, the uh, uh, storm surge may not be as bad now, but once we start seeing the winds coming in from uh, more of a southerly direction, uh, we could run into an issue there with uh, somewhat higher uh, tide there. So storm surge warnings uh, do continue. Notice how widespread this is, uh, basically uh, from uh, Longboat uh, Key all the way up to Swanee. So it really does include uh, areas like uh, Tampa. St. Petersburg still in on that. Spring Hill, Cedar Key obviously dealing with that right now because, well, storm surge again. Uh, or the, uh, uh, the landfall is just really moments away. Uh, talk about the uh, low tide. Well, there we are as far as uh, St. Petersburg. Low tide uh, at 5.35 a.m. And we have another high tide coming away just a shy of noon. Same thing for Tampa. Low tide a couple minutes before six o'clock today. So again, that all bodes well as long as we can get the winds shifting in our direction by the noontime hour and, and coming more out of maybe the west. Storm surge shouldn't be as bad, but also the winds won't be as strong either. So even at the next high tide cycle at uh, noon, I don't expect it to be as bad. And of course, never a good time to be in water if your state is being impacted by a tropical storm, not only for the Gulf side ray, but also on the Atlantic side that does extend up into the uh, into the Georgia beaches as well. And uh, yeah, even the Carolinas, not a good day to be in the water. Well, certainly not. And uh, the water's probably chilly as we get into this time of year as um, we're watching for what looks to be tropical storm force conditions um, probably ending here as we go through the first half of the day uh, in and around Tampa. But still notice we're still getting some gusts close to tropical storm force, 36 miles per hour at Tampa at McDill Air Force Base and over 30 here now at Lakeland. And these are these bands of showers and thunderstorms I had spoke about just a couple of minutes back that, you know, if we do get additional flooding, this would be how it would occur as we've had heavy rainfall, some spots six plus inches of rain, and now there's more bands coming in, kind of adding insult to injury, so that water probably has not had enough time to recede, so additional rainfall could cause additional flooding. Ocala, almost a 30 mile per hour wind gust there, Orlando about 26 miles per hour, so getting close to tropical storm force and your best chance, your probabilities of obviously decreasing to the east and northeast of a weakening Ada as it comes on shore here shortly near Cedar Key. Uh, Orlando, you've got about a 40% chance of seeing some tropical storm force wind gusts. And here's the forecast. 40 to maybe 50 miles an hour early this morning for Jacksonville to Orlando. Uh, most of us 30 to maybe 50 miles per hour. Some of the strongest gusts around the center. And they'll go mid-morning 30, 35 miles per hour. And then through the day, uh, probably going to see 35 to maybe 40 miles an hour at times. But uh, sustained winds in tropical storm force category or in that range. Um, um, probably not uh, likely, but still uh, causing problems. And with the wind coming in in the direction out of the southwest and pushing into Tampa Bay, it's going to be tough still to get some of that water out. So there may be problems here with still some 25 to 35 mile per hour wind gusts. They will continue to diminish as we head through midday and into the afternoon, even around Apollo Beach and Tampa. Still at times 25 to maybe 30 miles an hour, but the trend will be with each hour through the day, uh, less wind to come in. And notice we start getting a more west northwesterly wind here, Todd, as we head on through later this afternoon. So still maybe a tough time getting the water out of Tampa Bay first half of the day, but most likely looking a little bit better later. Uh, particularly when those winds are shifting off to the uh, west and northwest. Now, uh, you're looking live right now in Jacksonville, still dealing with a 14 mile an hour wind. The wind should pick up a bit. I don't expect the winds to be as strong in Jacksonville as they were in places like Tampa and St. Pete as Ada is really just minutes away from official landfall. It's just um, at least the latest advisory, the four o'clock hour. Five miles uh, just off the coast of Cedar Key. So let me show you where it's expected to go. It's going to pick up a little bit of its forward momentum. And then uh, notice it's going to be uh, cutting through Florida really through this morning. By the time we hit this afternoon, it could be emerging out in the open waters of the Atlantic Ocean and then starting to bring more impacts as far as the storm surge 
uh, flooding possible uh, from places like uh, Georgia, coastal Georgia, up through uh, South and uh, North Carolina as well. Uh, one thing is going to end up happening too is that now it's starting to in, uh, intermingle with some um, upper level trough with a bit of a cold front. So now uh, what's going to end up happening with uh, Tropic Storm Ada is going to start losing more of its tropical characteristics, become more non tropical, but can also maybe pick up a little bit of strength as well out uh, over the next uh, day or so if it's going to be out over the uh, open waters of the Atlantic. But let's show a short term here. So through the rest of this morning, again, it's going to make a quick uh, movement through uh, Florida, uh, Gainesville over toward Jacksonville. Notice uh, some of these numbers here again, 25 to 30 mile an hour uh, wind speed. So we're not quite looking at the uh, uh, tropical storm force winds. Doesn't mean that can happen. Doesn't mean you uh, may not have a quick gust there. But uh, for the most part, it's going to be a quick mover. By the time we hit in this early afternoon, again, this is just guidance. Doesn't mean it's going to be following this. But again, center circulation maybe here in southeast Georgia, maybe could be uh, already offshore at that time. Something that we're going to have to see. But the main thing we're seeing here is that the, the stronger winds are well out to sea. But again, that does not bode well for coastal cities for the Carolinas and Georgia because now that's going to be piling up a lot of the water uh, out over in um, to some of the coastal communities there. So something we have to continue to watch. And then by the time we hit this evening, a little bit breezy, but we're only talking about 10 to 50 mile an hour winds, places like Lake City and Gainesville and even in the Palm Coast as well. So another inch or so rain possible. Some of the, he uh, the heaviest bands can you continue to be a little bit farther offshore. Doesn't mean that we can't see something a little bit more than that in and around Orlando, maybe an inch maybe a touch higher is certainly possible, but the, the general trend is the heaviest rains are starting to push farther offshore. And again, everything you're seeing here as far as this, this is a guidance doesn't mean it's going to look exactly like this. In fact, all you got to do is look at radar and it doesn't exactly going to be bringing the heavy rain, but we could still see a couple of bands, uh, particularly into the I-95 corridor. But Ray, it's going to be uh, more of an issue, I think, into the Carolinas and uh, up toward uh, Virginia's as far as the heavy rainfall. Yeah, we'll get a little bit more in the way of enhanced rain with a front coming in and a little help from Ada pushing water in off the Atlantic. Well, here's what we know right now about Ada. President Trump has approved the Florida emergency declaration. This allows help from the government during relief efforts. Tampa International Airport is expected to resume all operations by noon today. Power outages in Florida continue to rise. More than 20,000 customers are in the dark. All right, so we'll continue to track Ada as landfall here is going to be shortly. All through the early morning hours, we do have crews that are lined up along the path of the storm as it's getting dangerously close now to the Cedar Key. This could be one of the spots where we may see landfall. Jim Cantori up. We've had Reynolds Wolf. We'll see more of them as we head on through the next couple of hours. At the This record-breaking hurricane season isn't over. The threat from Ada is still complex and dangerous to the southeast. Big, big rainfall stretching from Miami all the way over to the west coast of Florida. No one can cover this historic hurricane season better than the Weather Channel. Get the information you need to stay safe all week long right here on the Weather Channel. They're tracking Ada now, and it does look like um, we officially have landfalls. This is coming in from the Hurricane Center, making landfall near Cedar Key, Florida, 50 mile per hour tropical storm. Um, here's some of the impacts as we're seeing this entire patio backyard in Orlando or in Hollywood, Florida. That's about 30 miles northwest of Tampa. Uh, this woman took these pictures and says that the winds ripped the roof off her whole back patio. Yeah. Tropical storm does things like this and Ada though continuing to weaken now and will probably continue further 
as it moves on shore now, um, pushing on off toward the east and northeast now as it has officially made landfall uh, right near Cedar Key in Florida. That's what the Hurricane Center tells us as a 50 mile per hour tropical storm, 996 millibars and now moving northeasterly at 13. So all those stats are different. The northeast movement now, um, the location now is right near Cedar Key coming on shore um, and it will continue to weaken now as it's a 50 mile per hour storm and notice too, all the thunderstorms, the colder cloud tops now getting ripped away from the center, uh, certainly what you would expect. But now that we're later in the season, too, and we're moving further north in latitude, um, you know, those prevailing westerly winds will certainly do a better job at that. Forecast track, really not much change here. Right down the center there is where the center lowest pressure will go. Most likely staying a tropical storm even on into early Friday morning, but it'll be offshore with all the precipitation, the strongest winds on the east side. Not worry too much about wind. Uh, the rain's a different story that we will get to uh, later on. Uh, the alerts remain tropical storm warnings and tropical storm watches. Uh, Jacksonville and St. Mary's under a tropical storm warning. You may get some tropical storm force winds as we head on through this morning and storm surge warnings will stay in place. Uh, some spots have seen a record uh, water rise or storm surge. Flash flood watches. Notice how they're starting to get pecked away out and starting to go away. Uh, but still for Tampa and Avon Park and down even in Southeast Florida, Miami Dade and into Broward and Palm Beach counties, Todd, uh, there still may be some additional flooding. And you can see some of the video here. This is from mm -hmm. earlier in Sarasota, Florida, and this is what uh, looks like with storm surge flooding. Well, we had those 50 mile an hour winds gusting at times. Sarasota Police Department reported that they restricted traffic on and off the island to residents and emergency traffic only. Storm surge warning remains in effect and uh, still dealing with some of the high water that's certainly out there. Now, I want to show you that this is just not a Florida event here. In fact, now we're seeing a lot of tropical moisture, just a big fire hose of tropical moisture streaming in uh, in around the uh, Appalachians into the East Coast. And we have this cold front here moving in from the west. So that cold front is uh, you just basically have this gigantic sponge of tropical moisture. And the cold front is now wringing out all that moisture, squeezing it all out. And you have a lot of um, areas, mountains, a lot of uh, that water will have a runoff and will end up working its way farther uh, into the valleys. And that is why we have widespread flood alerts all up and down the region. A big widespread. Look at this in parts of uh, Western Carolina, North Carolina, into a good part of Virginia. We have have a flood of warnings of all shapes and sizes here. And look at this, even in bigger places, bigger cities like Atlanta, a big uh, mass of rain uh, came through several hours ago. Still have a flash flood warning out for DeKalb, Fulton, and Gwinnett counties. But we also have a couple of uh, warnings that are still out there. New warning, flash flood warning just popped out uh, for Green, Oglethorpe, and Putnam counties. That is until 1015 this morning. So we're going to see on again, off can rain, but the flood waters will still remain. And we also still have the uh, uh, flash flood warnings out there for towns in White County until 745. So Georgia having flash flood warnings and just picking a couple of flash flood warnings out here in the parts of uh, North Carolina uh, in around Hickory. Look at this heavier rain here, two, three inches of rainfall rate uh, in an hour time. That's why Alexander Burke and Culver County is under flash flood warning until 645. And uh, some bigger cities being impacted like Norfolk here. Uh, flood advisory in effect until 8 o'clock due the heavy rains. So, uh, yeah, Chesapeake, Norfolk, and uh, Virginia Beach being impacted, even going up to our nation's capital. Washington, D.C., Alexandria, um, Fairfax, Falls Church, all being impacted. Uh, looking at places like uh, Arlington, District of Columbia, Fairfax, all under a flood warning due to the amounts of heavy rainfall rays. So this is not just a localized event, Ray. The winds may be farther down to the south, but the widespread rain and flood issues extend all the way from the southeast to the mid-Atlantic. Yeah, and in between in the Carolinas, heavy rainfall in the forecast as the downpours will be heavy, a tropical feel to the air mass. I mean, it is just almost summer like out there. The dew points are in the 70s and that's a moisture laden atmosphere and just rich with tropical moisture that's going to just cause some big problems on the roadways as we head on through today. Now by about 5 a.m. Charlotte, uh, you're starting to get into it now. Uh, heavier rainfall starting to move in and just watch this area as we go through 6 and 7 and 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock. Very heavy rainfall. So at this point, we're looking at the potential for flash flooding and that flash flood threat will continue through the morning. By the early afternoon, there's just some scattered showers around. So an impact event here coming through over the first few hours of the morning in and around Charlotte, a uh, one inch, maybe a little bit more. If that radar verifies, it's probably going to be more than this, but it'll come down in a short period of time. So I would say in general, one to two inches of rain, um, maybe a little bit more in some spots. The highest likelihood though for flash flooding is going to be from Fayetteville 
to Greenville, maybe into Raleigh and Durham, Florence. This is where the rain will come down hard as we watch. As we head through the radar look here through the morning hours around Raleigh and into the areas just previously mentioned, Greenville and out toward Fayetteville. Look at the heavy rain by midday and early afternoon. There's going to be no let up here. If anything, the rain increases again in intensity and coverage. Tries to scoot east of Raleigh and Fayetteville, gets out to Greenville, New Bern and Wilmington. It is going to be one wet afternoon through the evening in eastern parts of North Carolina. At the home. And welcome back to continued coverage here on the Weather Channel. It is all about Ada and my meteorologist Reynolds will come to you from uh, Clearwater Beach. But we have some videos, a new video to share with you into the Weather Channel. This is from Treasure, Treasure Island, Florida. And you're seeing the effects of the heavy rain coming down, the water piling up, and first responders doing their very best to get people to safe spots, to higher ground. And sure enough, you see these people taking what matters most, those, those things that, that mean so much to them. And But number one thing is safety. And sure enough, that is where they're going for the time being. If you take a look at this system from high above, uh, you can see that it is like a wagon wheel with several of the spokes knocked out. It is not very symmetrical for this matter, but you can see that despite that, we still have some rain coming down. At our present location, where you're tuning in and watching, you might see raindrops coming from top to bottom across the screen, but at the same time, it's moving sideways at times, such as the nature of some of these showers that are coming on shore. But if you look at more of the expansive view of what we have on radar across the state, it really is, I guess you could say, right side loaded, where the brunt of it is making its way across much of Florida. Now, there have been heavy rainfall, and I guarantee we'd have heavier rainfall in places like, say, Daytona Beach or along the Space Coast compared to what we've had here, although this is one of the feeder bands that's coming through. So we're going to see this pattern begin to develop. Showers, a little bit of a respite, the wind picks up, then another band branch of shower activity comes through again. One thing you have to consider, though, is when you have a landfalling tropical system, one thing that can happen, not only the flooding, but there is the possibility you could have some strong winds and maybe even some tornadoes spinning up. With that wind anyway, I can tell you it is one of the big contributing factors to some of the power outages that we've had around the state. Last checks were in excess of 20,000 customers, mind you, customers without power. Now, if you extrapolate those numbers and say that on average, each of those customers has, say, a home with roughly four people, see roughly 100,000 people uh, just under that with that power. However, here in Pinellas County, uh, lights are still on. Things are okay for the time being, but all it takes is one gust hitting a tree, knocking over some branches, then the power going, going, gone can certainly happen. Well, uh, that is the situation that we have from the ground level here, and sure enough, finally getting some heavier rain that's coming on through. Let's head over to Ray to give us more of an expansive view of what's happening at this point and what we can expect in the minutes and hours to come. Ray. So now that we've got landfall, I think uh, what we're going to see is an unraveling of um, at least the center of Ada as it continues to move now northeasterly. So it has taken that turn toward the northeast and did make landfall uh, just a few minutes ago at 420 this morning, five miles north northeast of uh, Cedar Key is a tropical storm with winds at 50 miles per hour and a pressure of 996 millibars. So. Now on shore, now we should continue to see the winds weaken a bit. As you can see from our satellite picture, this is our infrared satellite picture, measures temperature of the cloud tops. Colder cloud tops, higher colder cloud tops, meaning stronger thunderstorms or heavier precipitation now well away from the center getting blown away pretty quickly now as uh, the heaviest rain pushes northeast of where the center is still some tropical storm warnings in place the potential is still there for tropical storm force winds in these areas as we watch the center go down the center of our cone here the national hurricane center's cone of uncertainty and a forecast track on off toward the northeast here and moving in a direction out over the open water of the atlantic ocean as we head through the next uh, 12 hours but still holding tropical storm strength into the afternoon. So we are looking at a storm that most likely will still be a tropical storm and bands of rain coming in. And these bands, as Reynolds said, will at times produce some heavier downpours and maybe some gusty winds. But a lot of this rain, remember those higher, colder cloud tops on that IR I just showed you? A lot of that rainfall right underneath where some of those higher, colder cloud tops are. So most of it now off the Atlantic waters and continuing to see still some rain in. So we're not completely out of the woods. I don't think we're going to get this like we saw over the last 24 hours, uh, but some heavier rain, maybe an inch or two in some spots. But look at this rain in the orange. Five to eight inches has fallen. That produced uh, in some spots knee high deep water along with the storm surge and up to waste in some spots in Gulfport. The broadcast media showing videos um, a storm surge flooding in Gulfport it appears to be knee high near the casino. So water rise coming in here, Reynolds, and um, some probably surprised in some areas we did get 
some of the highest level water rises in Tampa Bay in the area that we'd seen on record. And now those records only go back to 1991, but still uh, pretty impressive in many within the top five. Yeah, no question about it. What a year it's been and what a reversal of fortune it's been for parts of Florida that actually had a decimate now running a surplus. Well, obviously, as you were seeing at home, we have a surplus of rain that is falling for the time being and is beginning to pile up in spots. This is not the time really to start kind of going around your neighborhoods and taking a look at how things are because in the darkness and with the water coming up, kind of it could be a dangerous situation. So, folks, I implore you to wait till sunup before you get out and start checking out how things are in the community. But I can tell you, we have had the power edges around the state where we happen to be. Again, things are fine. Just those rain bands which continue to come on in. Well, folks, we've got continued coverage. What a season has been, what a season may continue to be. Lots of things to follow, not to say to full coverage comes up in just a few moments. Stay safe, stay dry, coffee up. We'll see you on the other side of this commercial break. And good morning, everyone, from downtown Tampa here. We are right at Bayshore Drive. The hospital is just to my right. This is where the northern end, if you will, of Tampa Bay kind of comes together. Unfortunately, Bayshore, as you can see behind me here, uh, is underwater. So this is uh, pretty much blocked off. Uh, this is where you would come in to Tampa, if you will. That's where you would go out. Both sides are, are blocked at this time. Uh, I'm going to have Brad zoom over. It's going to be a little dark for you this morning, so I want to apologize ahead of time. But it looks like, you know, certainly somebody uh, stranded, you know, we have a stranded vehicle out there that, that was probably in the height of this. The water's come down a little bit from where it was, uh, but we're also heading toward low tide. All right, so you got to remember that. Does the water come back up toward noon at high tide, especially if we keep this onshore flow? It's a possibility, or it'll certainly be a possibility to keep the water up at least uh, high uh, on Bay Shore. So this is a flood prone area. It's one of the lower areas, uh, certainly as you get down into Tampa Bay toward the bay itself, and it's like a wash tub out there. Uh, again, sunlight would be our friend, but this is 2020. We don't we don't get landfalling hurricanes uh, during the daytime anymore for some reason. Anyway, you can see what's happening uh, maybe by just the glare of some of the lights over the road on top of the water here. And occasionally you get a little spray up here on the seawall uh, from time to time. But uh, for the most part, Bay Shore is blocked. We know of flooding down in Longboat Key, which is down to my well down to my south. Um, that's a barrier island, and they experienced some flooding down that way. Apparently, it got even into some of the homes. So right now, the airport in Sarasota is slated to open at 6 a.m., unless that's changed from what I saw last. Uh, also, Tampa Bay International. Uh, will be shut down until about noon time today. They plan on their reopening, or actually to be, to be at full operation. I shouldn't say shut down, because I think they're, they're still open in essence. But in terms of they plan to be at full operation at about noon time today. Other than that, uh, this is what happens. Uh, storm surge, whether it be a tropical storm or hurricane, especially when you have the center going to our north like it did in Cedar Key, that puts Tampa Bay in the southwest flow. And that pushes the water back up into the Tampa Bay. And this is just one of the areas, too, uh, that is flooding. So there's flooding reported again this morning in Pinellas, in Hillsborough County as well, in some of these low-lying areas. Uh, in Gulfport, there's a casino there. Uh, we understand that's got some flooding issues as well this morning. So, you know, either way, just stay out of the flood water. Uh, stay out of the surge. It, it, it should hold its own, I think, this morning with the wind. And potentially, potentially, if the winds stay up, come up a little bit, as we get toward high tide around noon. Now you get about a foot, foot and a half tidal shift there. So there's a chance to at least keep some of this water around uh, till the early afternoon. Heck, we could even see the sun come out in spots before the water begins to go down. All right, Ray Stage, it gets thrown back to you because uh, this thing again is accelerating off to the northeast now, heading up toward the Carolinas. Some really warm temperatures, just crazy for November uh, across the southeast this morning. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, this is an air mass you would expect in the middle of the summertime, nonetheless, with dew points uh, yeah. in the 70s and temperatures in the 70s. And we don't even have any insulation or incoming solar radiation sunshine. That's basically what that means. And we will get more rainfall. But first, uh, let's get to what Jim was talking about. That's a surge right now. The numbers and the values have come down a little bit over the last couple of hours around Port, Old Port, Tampa, and St. Pete. But believe it or not, we did have a record. A record water riser surge um, at Port uh, St. Tampa. Ada for at least St. Petersburg, 3.47 feet was number four on the list for storm surge. But here's Old Port Tampa, 
Number one, not by a lot, but number one here. This is the valley above normally dry ground. Now the records go back to 1991, so uh, what is that, uh, almost 30 years? So it's not a huge history, but still, it's enough to put us in record territory. You're number one here from Ada. So some surprises, especially with that shift in the storm track a couple of days ago. And still these warnings stay in place because, as we had mentioned, as long as that prevailing wind and the circulation continues to bring water in, it's going to be tough to get water to come in this direction. So winds kind of pushing that way and trying to be pushing the water out from the other direction it won't be until we get that wind shift that we may see less of a storm surge potential. Uh, two to four feet, that is probably going to be about it. So if anything, we hold where we are uh, through at least high tide, which is going to be occurring at about 1130 this morning, 1152 actually uh, closer to noon. And still at that point, the wind direction is still supposed to be out of the southwest, so that's still going to make it tough to try to get water to recede. Uh, Tampa Bay, same thing around noontime today, and then tonight uh, when the winds shift around, we're probably going to be in better shape. So we still could see not only the water rise, but a dangerous rip current risk here. Why you'd get in the water at this point, um, I'm not quite sure, but the sun may pop out here at South Beach and... Uh, if you are vacationing, Todd, you know, you get down there in South Beach, people certainly want to get in the water. Very dangerous, though, to do so. Yeah, not a good idea. Not only there in Florida, but even up the parts like the Georgia and Carolina coast, not a good idea to be in the water either. Uh, take a look at some of the video we had uh, earlier. Uh, this is from Pine Island, and, uh, well, winds uh, sent the sailboat into a bridge there. Incident closed the bridge for several hours. Rescuers worried that the mast would uh, snap and fall on the bridge traffic. The owner of the boat was trying to help a friend when the high winds pushed them both into the bridge. Waves battered the boat and the dock, causing some minor damage. Let's take a look at some of the wind speeds right now. And uh, you saw the two uh, live hit, uh, hits we had there with Reynolds and uh, Jim. And uh, they're both in Clearwater and Tampa, respectively. We still have about 20, 26-mile-an-hour wind gusts. One thing I want to point, when uh, we had went over to uh, Reynolds Wolf, we had a really big burst of rain. And you can actually see that little yellow burst there. That's probably right where his location was. And that we're going to see this from time to time. There'll be a wave of some steady rain. You get a little break in the action. All of a sudden, you could get a little burst of some very heavy rainfall. So even though the worst conditions, at least for a place like Clearwater or Tampa, uh, are starting to head downward, particularly as we head into the low tide cycle, we're not done yet with the impacts from Ada, and we could still be dealing with some flood issues due to a few of these uh, bands of rain. Farther off to the north, rain really isn't as heavy from Leesburg over toward Orlando, still dealing with some gusts upwards of 26 mile an hour. Highest wind gusts to see right now is uh, in Leesburg, a 32 mile an hour wind gust there. But as far as the rainfall goes for central Florida, we're not seeing much in a way of any heavy, steady rain, just a few bands here and there that could be rather heavy. So the gust forecast, again, will continue to work its way on shore. Gainesville Jacksonville could still see the potential, maybe a 30, possibly tropical storm forest wind gusts as we head through the early parts of this morning. Let's take a live look at an area that's uh, starting to see some heavy rain, and that's actually Raleigh, North Carolina. If we have a live uh, look there, it's not just a Florida event here. The heavy rain is there as well. Morning, noon, night. Indulgent, delicious, irresistible. And welcome back to continued coverage here on the Weather Channel. I'm meteorologist Reynolds Wolf. We've got some new video in from Pinellas County to show you the story of what's been happening here over the last several hours. One, 
you'll take a look at this this business of the tables you see them in in the water surrounding them things are not as they should be compliments of ada all that water rising up that really is the big danger that you have with these landfalling tropical systems another video a bit of the issues of water i mean just rushing in i mean think of it as like a like a liquid sledgehammer and that can really cause quite a bit of damage obviously it can also cause a, a loss of life so folks we implore you to please be careful out there Again, welcome back, everyone. Those shots were in Pinellas County. I'm also in Pinellas County, to be more precise, in Clearwater Beach, where the skies are not clear. And as you can tell, the rain is coming down at this point. We've had intermittent showers, some heavier downpours at times, and then light precipitation to the point where it's, it's almost like a mist. But I will tell you, that is one part of the story. The other is the wind that has been causing that, that water to pile up. We showed you the, the, the evidence of the surge, how it's been affecting some of those businesses. But I can tell you that any place around this part of the coastline, including much of Tampa, St. Pete, any spot where you have land and its connection with, with water, you're going to have some kind of change, certainly over the last several hours. Water coming up, it's moving on through. In fact, the main causeway that connects Clearwater Beach back to the mainland itself, which we have to be on a barrier island, the eastbound lanes have been covered with both water and debris and have been closed for the time being. Power outages, Amazingly enough, in Pinellas County, there's not been a single report of power outages. However, statewide, the, the, system, the story is a little bit different. I'd say in excess of 20,000 customers, those may be on the uptick as we make our way through the next several hours. Now, the high view, if you look at the radar imagery from high above, the symmetry is a jagged mess. It truly is. You look at it, and you see a lot of dry air coming in on the western side, but the eastern side, that's where the big show happens to be, where you have all that moisture that's chugging its way along the east coast of Florida. Daytona Beach has had plenty of it. Spots like, say, uh, Titusville, certainly in Orlando, you had your share. But that eventually is going to roll on out, and a lot of that moisture could actually feed its way back into portions of, of the Carolina coast and, and beyond. But, but this morning, we can expect conditions here to improve. I would say by mid-morning, we can expect not only a mix of sun and, and clouds, but the wind should dry die down considerably, and the water will begin to recede. High tide expected around noontime today, and uh, I'll tell you, very thankful that it did not coincide with the, the, the approach of the system. But uh, again, the light to follow here. Let's get back into the studio with more of what we can expect. Uh, Todd, I believe, with a more encompassing view of where the system is going. Uh, thanks, Reynolds. And again, yeah, those little bursts of rain, you can see where he was, where it's just a little narrow band. But that's what we're going to be dealing with for a good part of the morning hours, or at least for the Gulf side of Florida. Let's get back and uh, talk about uh, some of the uh, numbers here. Uh, Tropics from Ada officially made landfall uh, earlier this hour, 420 Eastern uh, Standard Time, five miles north northeast of Cedar Key, Florida. It was a tropical storm with winds around center circulation, 50 miles an hour pressure and 996 millibars. The, millib uh, the pressure has been actually rising over the last several hours ever since Ray and I have been um, going on here since one o'clock in the morning and you really see what uh, Reynolds was talking about just how discombobulated the storm is we're really getting blasted and sheared apart by those upper level winds uh, taking uh, from what is this uh, infrared imagery and just showing all those uh, colder cloud tops blasting off of the east uh, coast of Florida at the moment now we still have some tropical storm uh, warnings here it has been trimmed down a bit but it's still from Sarasota all the way up toward uh, Jacksonville and even some of the barrier islands in uh, Georgia as far as the forecast fan, yes, it will continue to drift its way to the center circulation uh, toward Gainesville and over toward Jacksonville. So the potential for some uh, tropical storm uh, force wind gusts are uh, possible here, Ray. And of course, this storm also could end up taking more of a non-tropical look as it begins to uh, mix in with a number of troughs as well. Yeah, most likely start accelerating too, but not before we get a little tug off the center of circulation or a little enhancement to the rainfalls. The flood alerts extend into the Carolinas and the Mid-Atlantic. See Charlotte here on the left, uh, Washington, D.C. on the right. Very warm, very humid. Uh, we did confirm. I don't think it's 80 in Charlotte, what that temperature says there. But it's in the 70s, Washington, D.C. and Charlotte. In the path of some of these tropical downpours. So a uh, moisture-laden atmosphere. We've got a front to the west. That's helping lift the moisture up. It's coming down the form of heavy rain right now. And then we'll get Ada and some enhancement there. It's almost like... You know, we've got a magnet. Picture the magnet coming over the top and Ada passing south being like some metal filings. Kind of peels off some of those metal filings, right, and throws it into uh, the magnet, which is where the front is. And that's why we've got this heavy rain, a couple batches of it here. And numerous flood warnings. Now, the warnings are when you need to take action. Flooding eminent or is occurring. That's the definition of flash flood warnings. Uh, multiple warnings around Washington, D.C., down through the Roanoke Valley. Even getting west now of Charlotte with some heavier rain coming in. I don't think Mecklenburg County, which is where Charlotte is located, but uh, close enough. It is going to be 
a mess out there this morning. Just a hot mess as you get out of Washington, D.C., especially east and southeast out near uh, the Chesapeake Bay and the Hampton Roads area. Very heavy rain coming down right now and heading on into uh, northeastern parts of North Carolina. A uh, Raleigh a little low right now, but we're going to get to what the model thinks is going to be happening here as we go through today. And we'll see how that's going to change. Now, if you're in and around the areas in green here, the potential for flooding. Flash flood watches and flood watches in effect. Some heavy rainfall in the forecast. So watch what happens. I just mentioned Raleigh. You got a little bit of a break now, but look at this area of moisture mid morning all filling in and kind of converging on central North Carolina, South Carolina and parts of Virginia and will continue to roll through midday in the early afternoon on off toward the east, but still very heavy rainfall, flooding rain expected here. Dangerous to travel as we start to see that heavy rain cause most likely more flash flooding as we head on through this afternoon and this evening. Continuing coverage of Ada coming up. I drive a